Hello and welcome back to the show. Today I'm joined with a very, very special guest. She is a star and was in Eyes Wide Shut. She played the role of Mandy. Today I'm joined with Julian Davis. How are you today? Hi, fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So um, I guess with this whole controversy thing, really, I mean, it is quite shocking when I was doing research, I read up on exactly what happened. You, I mean, you, you always hear about bad things happening within Hollywood. I mean, there's there's people who do awful things to you. Well, you came out as a conservative. I mean, what? Well, it's funny, isn't it, that, that we can there? use the term came out, you know, <laughs> because, yeah. yeah, it's like the worst thing you could do is come out as conservative. It, it really is. I mean, for Hollywood, definitely the worst thing you could do. Yeah. After you uh, revealed that you were a conservative and that who you were voting for in the year uh, or who you were going to support in the 2016 election, did you see any major difference between how studios treated you, how peers within industry treated you? Oh, massive, massive. Um, my best friend at the time completely ghosted me. Um, most of the acquaintances that I've had that I've kind of built in Hollywood, and mind you, most of my career was actually in the UK, right? So when I came here, I was kind of in some ways starting again. It was very interesting how, you know, I would more often go out as an English person, you know, mm -hmm. auditioning as an English person with this accent. Um, than I would as an American because they would look at my resume and that's what I would get called out for because my resume was all, you know, BBC and, you know, English productions and whatever, you know, with, I mean, Eyes Wide Shut, obviously that was um, a dual production, you know, UK and America, but still, you know, most of my career was over there. But yeah, getting back to, I, I segued, getting back to that, um, yeah, most of my acquaintances, uh, pretty much distance themselves. I mean, one one friend said, you know, I can't be seen to be friends with you um, on Facebook because I have people on my page that are important and I can't really be, you know, publicly associated. And so, you know, it's like you say you're conservative. It's like putting a drop of oil in water and watching watching the or is it how does that work? You know how you put something and then it's everybody scatters. It's kind of yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, whoosh. yeah, but you know what, um, the way I felt about it is I was more than ready to do it. I mean, I, I started kind of moving to the right after 9-11. Um, I started researching things about 9-11 and, um, you know, and my, my, my attitudes and my stances continually, um, uh, I wouldn't say drastically changed, but I have been moving more to the right um, as I've been researching things and just looking into history and looking at the current global situation, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I, I don't regret coming out. Um, I'm okay with the fact that I've been pretty much blacklisted um, and ignored. I mean, actually, they like to think of it as just ignoring me which is fine, you know, and also with the way Hollywood is right now, I am so not the flavor of the month, you know. Um, so I don't regret it because the thing is, is that I felt so disempowered before, you know, as I started moving conservative, I kept it to myself for years and years. And so you'd, you'd, you'd find yourself in a conversation just kind of going, hmm, yeah, uh-huh, <laughs> you know, or you try to kind of play the devil's advocate. It's like, well, what if the other side says blah, blah, blah? What do you think about that? You know, and sort of just trying to play the fence for the longest time. But it just felt so um, disempowering. And, you know, I'm not young anymore. And so, frankly, I don't care what people think. I would rather be true to my beliefs um then then hide you know so if people yeah. don't like me if people don't want to work with me fine you know who your friends are you know well, well that's true i mean i suppose if there is ever one benefit of um doing something that the mainstream or the world in general uh, views as controversial is you do learn who 
who is on who is on your who is on your side and who is not on your side and who your real allies are. Uh, you said you brought up an interesting point that you started shifting conservative uh, post. 9-11, September 11th. I'm just curious because I've obviously done a bit of research into this. I think uh, you and I on maybe a, a many things we kind of would agree. What was it about 9-11 that got you to start moving to the right? Well, um, I mean, it, it's, it's multifaceted, but basically before that time, you know, I had been living in Europe. I, I moved to Europe the summer of 87, I believe. And then to England in, I think, 88 or 89. But anyway, so I had been, you know, well ensconced in Europe for a very long time, you know, previous to 2001, which is when 9-11 happened. And um, I didn't really feel any affinity towards America anymore. I'm just being frank. I mean, I really didn't. I just, you know, I, I considered myself, um, I, I suppose at the time, a citizen of the world. Um, I definitely preferred living in Europe. I preferred, you know, Mother Europe and yeah. the idea of, um, you know, the history of Europe and, you know, and England is very, is the closest to my heart. Um, and so when 9-11 happened, what really surprised me, considering how I was feeling about being American, I wasn't really that bothered one way or another. I, I felt myself more, um, more English or more citizen of the world than, you know, than, any, than, than American. And so when it happened, I was shocked at the level of patriotism and hurt that I felt being attacked like that, you know? I mean, it felt, it felt personal to me. And I think a lot of Americans felt that way. And then I started to think back on how I was raised and, you know, every morning in school, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and all of those things. And I think it, um, it, it must have had a much deeper effect on me than I really, than I really thought previous to 9-11. So then after that, I started kind of softening in my attitudes again about being American. I felt quite defensive about being American. Whereas even though I had a lot of friends on the left in England, because I was previously more on the left, um, they all thought of me as more sort of like, you know, English, really. I mean, they didn't, they no longer called me a Yank. They, okay. they, they, you know, they thought of me and my accent was much more mid-Atlantic being there for such a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. But the general consensus of the public was, you know, you Americans, you deserved it, you know, and I, and I felt really that hurt. Um, and so I started th thinking, well, why are we hated? I started becoming more protective of um, our civilization and our beliefs and our culture. And that started it. Um, and so, you know, and as things continued and, you know, frankly, I mean, I, I, you know, we get older, right. And as you get older, you start to have a, um, a kind of broader perspective of what you lived through before and what you're experiencing now. And then with my perspective of living all, over the world, um, I I just I started thinking, you know, maybe my my more kind of um, liberal way of looking at things isn't necessarily um, the best way to be, or the more cohesive in order to retain our civilization. And so that's why I continue to kind of explore. Um, well, I, you know, that's when I pretty much realized that I was no longer a liberal, definitely no longer progressive, um, and I was moving to the right. Yeah. So was it sort of a thing of, um, like you said, that you felt like you were being attacked, especially when um, when there were comments being raised, like, oh, America, or as American citizens, um, you and every other American citizen out there in the world at the time deserved it. Do you think it was a, do you think it was a thing of um, sort of finally a thing where 
America had something happen to them because what I what I obviously wasn't alive at the time. What I always hear about it, it was that it was such a shock that it happened. You know, it was like okay, you never expect something like that to happen. Then one day, boom, it happens. Was it as big of a shock as people say it was? I mean, I was shocked. At, it's like my patriotism just hit me like a tidal wave. I, that's that was the most shocking thing to me. And I think a lot of Americans felt that way, as I said. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of a lot of Americans took it very personally. We took it very personally. And we made some, I mean, politically, don't even get me started. I mean, we've made a lot of mistakes. And um, the only thing that I can say to that is that the average American person um, the average American person is very insulated. Americans tend to be insular um, because they don't travel very much. They have been taught that America is sort of like the center of the universe. And, um, and so because of that, you know, you get this attitude from Europe and beyond that like, well, who do Americans think they are? They think they're so great, you know. They have gone about the fact that they're the greatest country in the world kind of thing. And, you know, and you can understand from a different perspective, as I did living elsewhere for so long, that, um, you know, America isn't necessarily the center of the world. And, and you know, why, why should we consider ourselves that? I don't, I don't consider um, myself better than, than other people just because I happen to be American or I happen to be, you know, European descent or Anglo-European descent, you know, I, I don't, I don't consider myself better. Um, but I just, I, when that happened, I felt hurt then about the fact, about how people felt about Americans. Does that make sense? So I yeah. didn't, I understood their feeling and, you know, I mean, even I, this is, I mean, Americans are not going to like me saying this, but I remember being in London or, you know, or Paris or wherever I was. And if you heard an American on a on a, a tube or a train or, you know, in the city somewhere. And, you know, they've got their new clothes and their their brand new London fog and their American haircuts and <laughs> and their brand new sneakers, you know, for their trip to Europe. And then you hear them on the tube go, um, Oh, honey, is this the exit for Harrods? You know, and I would just find myself just cringing um, because Americans speak louder. You know, they speak probably 20 decibels louder than than Europeans do, um, uh, definitely than English do. And so, you know, you hear these sort of bellowing voices um, there. And from the European perspective, you can understand this, this kind of like, mm, sort of grimace of, you know, the way they feel about Americans. And I mean, I don't think that's changed. I, it hasn't changed now either. Um, but anyway, um, I can't remember what you asked me. I probably segued. No, no, actually, what you brought up was that you probably think that it is still that sort of that in in Europe that there is still a thought about Americans in a certain way. Um, yeah. I can obviously vouch for that. There is kind of a negative, but what I always find confusing is obviously I spent time in America. I spent I spent a few years in America. Is that people really who have never been to America, especially maybe on a on a holiday or something. But even if they haven't, I feel like America. And I don't agree with everything, right? I do think that Europe has got some better things than the U than the United States, but I think a lot of it is quite misunderstood. Some I agree with, but some I think is, okay, yeah, you just read a newspaper, now you have an opinion of a country you've never been to. I don't think that's really fair yeah. uh, when people who have not been to, um, to who have not been to the United States start saying a bunch of negative things about it. Yeah, and America no is, right, exactly. And America is very diverse. I mean, there is a massive difference between the, the feeling you're going to get in L.A. versus, um, I don't know, Memphis. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's Huge. kind of, I always saw it as like the, uh, like one country of of the European Union, obviously like Italy and Estonia are very different, just like yeah. how Washington and Florida is probably yeah. very different. I yeah. always saw it as kind of that, it's like different countries and different cultures 
within each state, obviously because of the history and everything, but. It, it is a bit, yeah, it is a bit. I mean, the sentiment that uh, a lot of the world has had about America being, you know, the big American bully. Um, okay, I am far from a neocon, okay. And, um, and I, I agree with that, that sentiment, actually. Um, I didn't used to. Um, you know, initially, I remember after 9-11 and, you know, we went into Iraq and, you know, we were trying to find weapons of mass destruction and, um, you know, we needed to kill Saddam Hussein and, you know, and all of that stuff. And then going into Afghanistan and, you know, I, um, well, I'm an, I'm an isolationist. OK. Mm -hmm. um, and I just believe that the peoples of Western civilization need to be allowed to keep their culture and keep their lands. Um, and so the fact that we had gone into Iraq to try and change things, what's the point and why are we meddling? I mean, I, I feel terrible for those people who are oppressed. I do. It is not down to us to go in and force our way and try to um, in, uh, and try to enact regi regime changes in, in these countries around the world. I just, I think it's wrong. I do, I, we have no business doing that. And I don't understand why America has been big brother all these years. So in that respect, I understand the hatred, but what pisses me off, really pisses me off, is that when people paint every single American with that same brush that, you know, they look at me like, oh, you're a big, stupid, ignorant American bully that has gone out and destroyed all these countries because you think you're so great. Well, no, actually, that's not me. And that's not a lot of people. So, um, yeah, so that's that's when it really that's when it bothers me. But even even when the even when the United States did go into Iraq and Afghanistan, there were people within domestic mainland con mainland United States who were against it. There were people protesting, people getting arrested. Turned out that it was a whole lie about this whole WMD thing. Yep. So even that even that whole thing where people go, oh, all the Americans wanted it. OK, well, I have the videos of the dozens of protests of the people getting arrested yep. saying, don't go yeah. there. It's a lie, blah, blah. Yeah, that was a that was a that was a huge mistake. A huge mistake. And going into Afghanistan as well, just, uh, yeah. The people who I consider to be my more, my mortal enemies, um, the ones who in, in America, the politicians that say, and the globalists that, that talk about saving our democracy, um, they're not trying to save our republic. They're not trying to save freedom, freedom of speech, the right to bear arms. They're not trying to save our constitution. They're not trying to save our God-given rights. They're not trying to save tradition, culture, um, the family, our belief in God. They're not trying to save any of those things. Uh, they're not even trying to save our gender and our sexuality. And and I and it just it, it does it makes me sick that they say saving our democracy when that really means ushering in totalitarian communism. <laughs> That's the truth. That's what we're looking at. And and yeah, we're we're turning um, we're turning totalitarian communist. That's what well, even then when Pete when when it says. Um saving our democracy and this is not just for the us but whenever whenever i think about saving uh, saving our democracy or what have you what i am quite concerned with and yeah i'm younger don't know everything blah blah but when people say saving our democracy the chain that i've always the pattern that i've always found was that saving our democracy in layman's terms means invading and causing genocides and killing people in other countries yeah you do it. I, you know, I just, I just don't think we should be big brother anymore. No. Well, yeah. This whole big brother thing. I mean, obviously I think everyone knows that, well, most people I think who are somewhat on the other side know that, know this whole quote that, it's, that 1984 was not an instruction manual, but more of a, a warning or, or what have you. Yeah. Do you, if, 
do you think that the world is sort of going in a 1984 type direction like a Eurasia and Oceania in that story <clears throat> the world hmm. um yes I do I do think that there are a few countries that are holding out that are trying to hold out Hungary being one Italy being one um uh Czech Republic um Paraguay so yeah. there are a few that are holding out. Um, I fully support those countries. <laughs> I fully support those countries, yeah. I think, I think the problem is, is that um, our civilization has been, for lack of a better word, infiltrated by people who are communists or Marxists, whatever you want to call it, and they've kind of repackaged this communism, Marxism thing for, for today. And they've been propagandizing people for a very, very long time. And this is not just in America, this is in Europe as well. Yeah. Because the people that want to destroy Western civilization so that they can control it, you know, so that they can subjugate it, the way that they have gone about doing that was by um, corrupting it. Um, uh, what's the word? Um, there was this great ex KGB guy that was talking about it. I, I can't. I can't think of his name right now. But um, giving people a sense of hopelessness, um, taking away their sense of morality and their belief in God and family and all of those traditions that, you know people in progressive circles think are, you know, old fashioned and ridiculous and that that's not progress, but it's those things that, um, that pull it apart. And they've been working that way, um, all over the world to, to corrupt, um, some of the very basics of our sense of morality, individualism, family, all of those things. Um, and by doing that, they've weakened, they've weakened, they've, they've weakened people, they've weakened the family, and they've definitely weakened the individual, or should I say individualism. Um, and so when you do that, and, and especially when you take away, when you take away like a core of what um, keeps a people together, um, you create a vacuum. And when you create a vacuum, then something else comes in to take over, right? Well, that's what they've been doing, creating a, a moral um, a moral and cultural vacuum in order to come in and take over. But what they want to destroy is um, the West, the West's sense of individualism. They want to destroy that to embrace, you know, Marxist, communist, totalitarianism. Those are collectivist um ideologies right and so that's why it's not meshing well with the west because the west historically um and how the west was built was on individualism you see well well even that thing where um where he said about how it's almost like a sense of hopelessness is being created you know a lot of people uh, a lot of people who I speak to here in the UK obviously talk about, you know, when they're in a dangerous situation. And the argument that I always bring up is the most dangerous person in this in this example to be fearful of is the nihilist, not the not the psychopath or the sociopath, because the psychopath might have something to lose. A nihilist who's got nothing to lose, they don't care about anyone else. If they I, I, I don't know who told me this. I heard it years ago. I think I actually heard it in America. Someone said, if they don't care about themselves, oh, we were talking about um, pe like criminals and that. If they don't care about themselves, what makes you so arrogant to think that they care about you? I, I find that very rare to ever happen. And when you bring up this sense of helplessness, it reminded me of something that I've been seeing in real time develop. And I don't know what you think of this, but it's that the peoples, especially people in my generation, Gen Z, as they call it, their attention span in real time 
has decreased so that they cannot even focus. Most of them, and I hate to say this, have probably already clicked off this video. Exactly, exactly what you're showing there with the application known as TikTok. A maximum of two seconds and they're bored already. I can't believe this. Again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, at first we thought this was a wonderful thing, right? But how many hours do we spend on our phone? It's it's not good. I mean, I because of what Jay and I do um, to earn an income, I, I am married to my phone. It's really it's really annoying. If, if there comes a time when we no longer do what we need to do in order to have an income, I will I will ditch that phone. You know, I'm going to make a point of like, OK, I am not going to look at anything. I'm not going to look at politics. I'm not going to look at Facebook. I'm not going to look at Instagram. I'm just done, you know, because I think that we need to be done. Um, I don't it. Uh, there's good things about it and bad things about it. But um, what what concerns me and I saw something recently where they were talking about this. Oh, Tucker Carlson was talking about this books versus yep. internet. I mean, if you have old encyclopedias, for God's sake, keep them. If you have old history books, keep them. Because I can tell you, it's things have become so, history is being rewritten all the time. And if you use Google as a search engine, I mean, forget about it. You are not, you are gonna get such biased information I don't even think if you scroll down to page flipping 20, you're going to get the, you know, you're going to get unbiased information or at least get information from all different directions. There's only one um, search engine I use for anything that is remotely political in, in any way or religious or whatever, and that is Quant, Q-U-A-N-T, Quant.com. That's the only one. Duck, duck, goes crap, Google's crap. You know, use Google for, I don't know, if you want to go shopping for something, right? But, yeah. but otherwise, pointless. Yeah. No, and I do think it is a bit of, a lot of people nowadays are using this term clown world. You know, when people always say, <laughs> what I always find funny is when people say, um, when I when I'm talking to someone, sorry, and and they say and I, and they say something that I don't necessarily agree with all the way or or at all, and I ask them, uh, say keep it civilized, everything. But I ask them, why do you think this? The answer is never okay. Well, I read Marcus Aurelius, and this was the conclusion I drew. Blah blah blah. It's always it's always either saw it on my phone, saw it on Google, or I saw it on TikTok in two seconds no one can have an idea of a philosophy yeah told to them in two seconds that's no. good no no uh, what what i find very sad is for you know gen z and hell even gen x and even a lot of boomers um mm -hmm. that they have been propagandized for decades decades and the people that are still on the left and that are still progressive don't even realize it. And I realize that people on the right have also been propagandized. I mean, we have been the whole the whole idea of divide and conquer, right? But absolutely. But I would say that the West particularly has been targeted um, and propagandized and brainwashed in order to um, in order for for the the puppet masters to divide and conquer, and that's what I think has happened. Um, well, it's I, an ancient strategy. It's, it's an, an ancient, ancient strategy that yes. the Romans or the Greeks used. I don't know which one. When both empires fell, one invented the circus, the other divided and conquered. I don't remember which one did which, but you know, as long as people keep arguing or you know sending death threats or what have you on Instagram, Twitter, or scrolling TikTok they're not going to know what's monumental to their lives, right. what's monumental that's happening domestically within their country or a country that they're a citizen of. One change in law that they don't know about could change their lives forever. Let's say a but, citizen and, and, of... 
but but the funny thing is is that they they don't watch that stuff the the changes in the laws that would affect them aren't reported they're not report so here's the thing if it's a change in a law that would affect them they might report it in in right wing um publications or and not mainstream but you know might report it there but the thing is if you have a conversation with somebody on the left um and you say well this is this and they'll say well that's not true because you saw it in such and such publication and therefore because it's such and such publication it's a hundred percent false and so i got to the point where there's no there's no point in having a conversation i mean and this is ironic i don't miss my acquaintances that I had in Hollywood. I don't want to have a conversation with these people anymore. If they don't see the evil, and, and I'm going to call it that, the real evil that is rising up in the West, if they don't see it, what, do, what, what can I say to them? You know, because that's what I see. I see, I see evil. It's palpable how evil things are now. I mean, it truly, you know, and I, I mean, this sounds like I'm, I'm like, uh, you know, I don't want to sound insane or whatever, but it's just, uh, I mean, I, it's satanic. It is. It's satanic what's happening. And I'm horrified. Well, even the whole warning thing, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with this story. I don't know if this story is true or not, or like if it's from an, like an old text or anything. But I heard this story once, which is what you were talking about, how you see no incentive anymore to have conversations with the people who are not, let's say, awake to the information that you know. It's a story about a um, thousands of years ago, a flood was happening and it was going to flood the whole world. It's like a myth story. And there was a guy... Are we talking about the story of Noah? <laughs> no, 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 okay. not, with the, not with the ark, no. But the guy refused to evacuate. He, everyone else left, everyone told him to leave. He said, no, no, I'll be saved. The flood comes, he's swimming in the water. It's like he's on his own. It, he's got very low chances. A, a rowing boat comes to him to save him. He says, no, 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 I'll be saved. It'll all be fine. Then another rowing boat comes. Again, he rejects their offer to help him out the water. And then he obviously succumbs to the water and drowns. And then he asks, why wasn't I saved? And in the story, God is the one that tells him, you weren't saved. I sent you a lifeboat with three people. You rejected it. To start off with, I actually had other people warn you to get out of the hell that you're about to be in. Then I sent another lifeboat just in case you have a change of heart and you still rejected it that's the story i think that resonates the most with what's going on now absolutely 100 percent. absolutely yep and, and that's and that's and that is why i um i'm not really interested in having a conversation anymore with with people because i think if you don't see it i'm not going to get you to see it there's nothing yeah. i'm going to be able to say so if you don't see it if, if you don't have some kind of, um, I don't know, epiphany of some kind, and I pray to God that, that somehow that happens, but what can I do, you know? I don't think it's a good use of time, honestly. I no. think your time could be used doing things that are a bit more noble than arguing with people that you're not going to reach, you know? Absolutely. Or improving on yourself or or making sure that you at least get out of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I, I would, you know, I would love to have a solution, but who am I? And um, I'm not planning on running for any kind of office soon. Um, I don't have the, I don't have the finances um, or the security or the power players on my side. I'm not really, it's, it's just, I don't, I don't see it as being in my, you know, in my my life journey to be, you know, political on that degree. And in fact, um, when I came out as a conservative a number of years ago, um, I'm not as vocal these days about it. You know, I left my Twitter. Um, I have an Instagram that is totally non-political. My Facebook is 
I am political on Facebook, but it's friends only. And I probably still have to do some house cleaning. <laughs> but uh, but I'm, yeah, I just, I, you know, I, I don't want to write any more articles. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done with all that. And that sounds sad. I mean, you know, that maybe I should be more fired up. Um, but I just, with all the things that have gone on in the last number of years and the state that we're in here in America, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make myself a target, um, because things are getting really not good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but the interesting thing is what you were saying about how people don't necessarily see the propaganda that they're being fed. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, well, personally, I mean, I'm on, I'm on some different news sources. I don't watch the news or look at the news that often. No. But I guarantee that if I were to go around everyone I know in the UK and ask them, okay, what do you think is going on in America? None of them, or maybe five, or maybe ninety-five percent of them, would not be able to tell me anything that you do not know about what's going on in America because it's not reported, or it's certainly not reported. Oh, it's, it's absolutely it's not. Happening. No, it's, it's absolutely not reported in the UK because. You know, most of the UK is run by Associated Press, and the and the Associated Press is left and progressive. I mean, they're basically, uh, they're you know the Biden regime's apparatchiks. That's what they are. That's what they are. And so, you know, that's just. <laughs> I mean, it's laughable what they are. And in fact, you see it. I I, I used to think there there was only one political show worth watching, in my opinion, only one. And that's Tucker Carlson. Um, and he used to do these little um, um, kind of vignettes showing how the brainwashing works. So, you know, like saying a term like, and this could be a real threat into um, destroying our democracy, right? And he, they would say the same exact lines, same exact wording. And he would show it on CBS, NBC, CNN. They'd say it in the New York Times. They'd say it everywhere. They'd say it, you know, national news, local news, everywhere. And then you talk to people and they would say, well, you know, this is this is destroying our democracy. And I'm thinking, OK, so which show did you watch last night? MSNBC, CNN. Did you read the New York Times? It's like it's just it's everywhere. And then so they have these little sound bites that they all say. And I think. Do you not see, do you not see that you're all getting the same crap and you're not thinking beyond that? And that's, that's what upsets me. Oh, I get so frustrated because I, you know, I want people, like people are looking, they're looking at the forest, right? They're looking at these little individual trees going, look, look, look at that, look at that, that's horrible. And I'm going, but wait, pull back. Let's look at the whole forest. Let's look at the history of the forest. Let's look at what's happening to the whole forest. But it's like, no, I'm looking at this tree. Shut up. You know, you're an idiot. Look at the tree. Look at the tree. That's what's happening. And he was the only one. Tucker Carlson was the only one that was really showing in, you know, like video. You could see him all doing it really showing that that's what they were doing. That's how they're brainwashing them. And they're doing it in the schools. They're doing it at, at colleges, definitely. Oh my God. I mean, if I had a child today, and in fact, I've heard about this. We have a lot of British friends, obviously. I would not send my kid to school. No way, no flipping way. I would, we would be sent, we would be homeschooling. They would not go to university. They would learn a trade. I mean, no way would I send them to school. It's just an indoctrination zone. As much as we can say the internet and the media here isn't free, and I'm sure that there's an element of truth to that, it's a, it's a lot more free than it is in DPRK because there's a reason you think the way you do, there's a reason I think the way I do. So when people say, oh, it's not my fault, I saw it on the news, I do think that is a bit, actually, that's an extreme cop-out because there is opposition available. Yeah. It's And it's especially when they say, <laughs> well, For well, yeah, I'm, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of an optimist still. I mean, I mean, I agree with the statement, go where you're treated best. But um, there's a reason why I think 
differently than another person thinks who thinks differently to me and so and so and so on no one should have group think which is to me one of the most terrifying things yeah. out there orwell warns us about this in 1984 and yet the irony is the most creative people are the worst group thinkers that i've ever met really it's it's, it's unbelievable in hollywood yeah. You cannot leave that groupthink. You cannot leave progressive groupthink. I did. I'm blacklisted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what I'm saying to you, and, and, and here's the thing, and here's the pressure. Here's where the pressure is, is that if you go against the narrative of the groupthink, you will not only um, risk your job, so that's your livelihood, um, you risk your friends, you risk your yeah. family, you risk your network, you risk everything. And so it's, you know, when people come out like me that, you know, come out as a conservative, it's dangerous to do that. I mean, you have to be willing to give it all up. And I was at the point where I was, you know, you're as free as you allow yourself to be. Um, yeah. If, if you were to look at the average person um, in America, you know, let's not, let's, I won't bring in, you know, um, UK and Europe into this, but just the average person in America, the average life, um, no, they're not free. No, they're not yeah. free. Um, you know, everything they do is tied to their social security number. They um, legally are supposed to have their ID on them at all times. Um, you know, they have, uh, they're, they're tied into the government with, for whatever programs, whether it be social security or welfare or, um, or, you know, housing help or, um, you know, and then, and then you've got mortgages. I mean, mortgages make you a slave. Um, right. Do I you mean, you're just, mean? what do you mean? Do you know what mortgage means in French if it's translated? No, tell me. Death pledge. <laughs> oh my God, how freaking appropriate. <laughs> it's just, yeah, because it's, I mean, it is relentless, the whole thing of mortgage, because it's just like you pay and you pay and you pay and then you die. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, there, so there is a thing I found out recently that um, Americans can do, and I've been looking into it, but it's it's a bit of a logistical, um, legal <sighs> nightmare, really. If you're not um, if you're not if you don't have a brain for legalities, which I really kind of don't, so it's it's tricky. But there are people that truly can be free and truly can opt out of the system. Um, and that is becoming a non-citizen national or a state citizen. And in essence, it means you're, you're giving up your passport um, and you are not no longer a citizen of the United States Corporation, but you are a state citizen of the United States of America, if that makes sense. See, it's like a word yeah. legality thing, but you, you basically are not, you're not owned by the system anymore. I think there's something like that, especially with America. I was doing research on this with American Samoa and I think Guam in the Pacific, yeah. where there, where every citizen is a U.S. national, but their only, I don't know which island it is. Let's say it's American Samoa. It might not be. They, they're U.S. nationals, but they're not citizens. So I think right. that's kind of what I people think it's, are looking it's, at. Yeah, it might be similar. It's called non-citizen yeah. national um, yeah. or a state citizen. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I am looking into that. Um, and then there's other things that you can do to get out from under um, the powers that be, like having a land trust versus having land where you, you know, so meaning a land trust means that you own the land absolutely and you don't pay property tax or anything yeah. like that. But, you know, that 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 involves um, my husband and I moving and, you know, getting somewhere outright and, you know, all of that stuff. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Biggest mistake of my life. And I'm saying this to you as a, a young person, mortgage, Ooh, big no, no. I, I wish, I wish we'd never done that. It's like, it's just this thing that's yeah. Death pledge. Oh my God, yeah. that's so appropriate. No. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to opt out of all of it. Like I don't have, I don't have health insurance at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, because I don't want to be part of that system. I also don't trust that system anymore. After COVID, I. There's a certain element with this whole thing where the left and the right wing, they belong to the same bird. I hear that quote all the time. So it's that thing where I always have that concern where, okay, let's say I agree more on a policy from a right wing person or a policy from a left wing person, right? I'm always concerned that either way, it's just another divide and conquer strategy that I'm blind to. Because the bird needs both wings to fly. Yeah. Which is, which is weird. Well, I mean, we the, the, yeah, the uniparty is alive and well. I mean, of course, they, the biggest thing is the Second Amendment. Um, and so they obviously want to get rid of our guns. But that's, that would be a huge mistake. People don't. And I didn't. I mean, I used to be very anti-gun as well. I didn't understand it, you know, especially from a European perspective. I was like, oh, these Americans, you know, all gung-ho with their guns. It's like, you know, all macho and stuff like that. And I, I, I didn't understand it. And then every time you have some kind of school shooting um, or some mass shooting somewhere, you think, oh, my God, isn't it terrible? It's the guns. It's the guns. We've got to get rid of the guns. You know, it's... Um, it's it's ridiculous. What we're what we're seeing is the collapse of our culture and our civilization and our morality, and that is reflected in the people that are shooting up schools and shooting up, um, you know, I don't know, grocery stores and malls or whatever they're you know wherever they're doing it. It's there and. We can go back to nihilism again. There is a there is a nihilistic aspect to this because they've been so demoralized that there's nothing left. But oh, the weird thing is, it's it's a, it's a, it, yes, and it's like demoralization, degeneracy, and the other thing that's really interesting about this, yeah, is that it has. It has, it has forged and fed narcissism to such a degree because the left, how they get people into their whole groupthink is through victimology. So if, if somebody feels that they're a victim, um, you know, they feel that they belong on the left because they, they feel that they've been victimized in one way or another, right? Um, and the left will find a multitude of ways to figure out how to call each individual a victim to something, right? The weird thing is, is that th with the internet, um, it's like when you're, when you're a victim, all your thoughts are on you and how you've been victimized. And so victimization and narcissism, they just go hand in hand. They really do. Because you're, so focused, a dangerous cocktail. because you're focused in. And then the more you're focusing on yourself, if, if you think about the mindset of somebody who would go in to a school and start killing people, they're extreme narcissists. Hmm. They might hate themselves at the same time, but they're extreme narcissists because it's like, I, I'm a victim, I hate myself, I hate what all you have done to me. Do you think the rise in technology, like with the phones, do you think it's sped it up? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because what you said about, I mean, it's what you were saying about Gen Z and about their, um, their level of concentration being only, what, two, three seconds when they're looking at this yeah. thing? Well, that's, yeah. that's harmed people. It's harmed people rather than, you know, I just remember when I was a little kid, my mother would be yelling from the other room like dinner, you know, and we'd all be looking at the TV 
<laughs> not even concentrating and she'd have to go and walk in front of the tv and turn it off she's like dinner you know she goes yeah. stop you're you're it's like you guys are a bunch of zombies looking at the boob tube that's what they used to call it you know and i mean this is worse isn't it the internet it my gosh worse. i mean there's so you know and there's things i love about it i mean like i love going onto instagram and looking at all these beautiful places around the world and i think ah oh, you know i really want to go to this that and the other um but at the same time it's just such a time suck and mm -hmm. i think it would, i think all of us would be better off if we um started challenging ourselves where you know we're learning new things maybe learning new languages um learning how i don't know learning survival techniques for instance you know yeah. how to how to set up a, a camp in the wild how to cook how to start a fire um you know how to um, how to find food for yourself, how to forage, things like that, and and even just basic things where you just can empower yourself as a free person, you know, yeah. to empower yourself so that you're not dependent on anyone, you're not dependent on the medical industry because you know there's so many people here. I have a former acquaintances acquaintance here that is you know a huge Bernie Sanders supporter. And she's all about, you know, socialized medicine. And, you know, I'm not going to diss some of the good aspects of national health in the UK because I, you know, there were good aspects to it. But at the same time, how much do you want to just blindly rely on, on people or doctors or nurses? I don't want to. I want to be informed, you know, and I want to, I want to um, be able to, research stuff outside of allopathic medicine and think, what can I do to heal myself? Not just to, you know, put a Band-Aid on an ailment I might, I might have, but heal myself. Yeah. What can I do? How can I be more empowered in dealing with what I have or, you know, with helping a family member or a friend or something, right? It's, it's all about that. And I think we don't do that enough and we don't push ourselves enough. You know, we're on the phone all day and, you know, we're just, we're just honestly, truthfully, the West, we're getting stupider. We are getting yep. more stupid. Our IQs Absolutely. are lowering. And this is, this is, this is terrible. And, and of course the puppet masters want this. They want us stupid. They want you stupid so that you can be protected and what they'll say and controlled. And what they'll say is it's for your safety and security. But screw that. I don't want to be kept safe and secure by someone else. I want to be able to keep myself safe and secure. In fact, there's a hell of a lot of doctors out there. And I hate to say this because, you know, you have to do a lot of study to become a doctor. Yeah. But there is a tremendous amount of doctors out there and nurses that have zero critical thinking. They just immediately trust their institutions, the medical institutions or big pharma or whatever, and, and they don't question it. Those are the doctors that I do not trust. The doctors that I trust are the ones that speak out and the ones that have actually um, been vilified and the ones that have even lost their license. I would sooner go to a doctor who's lost their license over this than a doctor that's been, you know, gung ho, pro who and CDC all the way. No question. Time will tell if, you know, what's true and what's not. Time, yeah. truth has a way of coming out eventually. I mean, look at all the things that happened with COVID after that. You know, people were denied work, people were denied medical attention, people were denied um, um, transplants, yep. still are, still are. And not only that, um, people were denied travel and they had, you know, they now have these like, um, you know, uh, like COVID passports. And I don't know if that's still going on in, in parts of Europe, like in Austria, it was really just like it's not it's so, only the u.s now unfortunately okay. i mean it's yeah. so authoritarian it's just unbelievable um so you know all of those things was moving in the direction that they want the world to be in so that we can be utterly controlled
you know, controlled where we travel, controlled what we do, controlled what we buy and sell. I reject all of it. The, the beginning of um, digitization of our money, like when the digital, if the digital dollar goes through, yeah. we're done if we don't, if we don't push back. Well, actually, I'll, I, say, I'll say it nicely. Let's let's just, you know, nicely push back. But I don't yeah. mean that. I mean, I mean, we need to push back hard, really yeah, hard. So the puppet masters in the West that have been trying to destroy the West have been doing a pretty crap job of it, right, for quite a long time. And this is why our debt, especially, I mean, I'm talking America now. Yeah. The American debt is is obscene. It's disgusting. And um, the puppet masters want to retain their control. So they, they're in a position now where they're between a rock and a hard place. The only way that they can save themselves and maintain control of everything is to go digital, right? Because they can wipe all the other crap off the, off the books. Absolutely. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah, of so, course, yeah. so that's why, that's why everybody in the West in the world needs to reject the digital dollar outright. Absolutely just, you know, yeah, reject, reject, reject. Um, because I would rather see them go down than the people, you know, Absolutely. we the people. Yeah. yeah. We the people that- need to maintain our freedom and our ability to buy and sell and do whatever the so I was going to cuss, <laughs> but you know, whatever the hell we want, we should be able to yeah. do what we want. I mean, within, you know, moral, cultural reason, yeah. but you know, what Absolutely. I'm saying is that, um, in order for us to retain our freedom, we need to have actual cash. And the mistake is our cash needs to be based on the gold standard. It needs to be based on something that's tangible. It can't be based on nothing. And this is the problem with the dollar is that it's a fiat currency now. We have to go back to the gold standard. We have to. And if that means that we go bankrupt and we aren't able to pay our bills, well, then good, because the puppet masters are going to go bankrupt because all their stuff is built on sand. What I'm saying is, yes, cash is better. Cash is cash better. Is it's, king. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. love cash. I always pay with cash. It's like you, like you said earlier, you're a dual citizen, grants you that insurance. Now, maybe maybe both but, countries are know, going in the wrong direction. Yeah, they are. I mean, I'm still have that insurance third place. citizenship. You know, I've been, I've been, there's a few places I've been looking into, you know, just in case we got to get out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with uh, citizenship by investment? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same. I've been, yeah. yeah. I've been looking at that the whole I've time. Been, I'm looking into a number of places. Um, you know, I can name them, but you know, Portugal, Paraguay, for sure. Yeah. Possibly Chile. Chile's looking um, a little bit more promising with what what's going on politically there right now. Um, yeah. uh, where else have I been looking at? Mexico. Um, did I say Portugal? Yeah. Czech, yeah, Czech cool. Republic. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, and possibly, I mean, maybe one day we'll move back to the UK. I don't know. I don't know. I'm right now. I'm I'm exploring all options. I'm learning about different countries and what's possible. Yeah. I'm gonna start doing um, more research into learning Spanish. I mean, I le- I know a little bit of Spanish. I know a little bit of a number of different languages, but I'm gonna start learning Spanish because there's a lot of countries like we could go to if I exactly. if I'm more conversational. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, that's the one thing. I mean, I wish that by osmosis I could learn Spanish, Portuguese, Czech. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe some yeah. Russian, some Chinese, just for good measure. Be so good. French. Yeah, oh so my god. It also protects you internationally. So I'm learning a few languages as well. That's the substitute for TikTok for me. Yeah. It's languages. So good. It's and speak- you know what? And it keeps you smarter too. I mean, that's the thing is that people need to constantly um, challenge themselves in doing new things. Because if you're just doing the same thing all the time and you're not thinking when you're just going, looking at, you know, so you need to challenge your brain so that you can start thinking properly um, and, and improving your intelligence.
Yeah. Anyway. But that's the problem. People, I, I'll say Gen Z because that's the videos that you always see online. Yeah. Gen Z, my generation, if you, all you have to do is look up asking Gen Z basic questions to see what level. It's not are. good. It's not they good. They can't name any country. But and to me, that's terrifying. It's terrifying. And it's by design, you see, because an yeah. uninformed population is easy to be controlled. Right. That's yeah. I think Thomas Jeff I think Thomas Jefferson said something like that. I don't know the exact quote, but he basically hmm. said uh, he, he said something. He yeah, said something exactly on those lines. Yeah, I don't know the quote. Yeah, yeah but yeah. No, no. I mean, I know the quote, but I can't quote it. But yeah, it was very. Yeah. Similar. Yeah, it's very yeah, important. And that's why, you know, and, and I think the founding fathers here said something along the lines of, you know, well, we've we've made you this republic, you know, a representative democratic republic. So it's not a democracy. Yeah. That's the thing that people don't understand. It's not a democracy. A democracy is mob rule. And that is what we have now. We have mob rule. <laughs> but um, but what what started when this country started, we were a representative democratic republic. And I remember the founding fathers said something and I don't know which one said it, but he said, here it is. Hope you can keep it. You know, good luck to keep it. Yeah. And we haven't kept it. We lasted 200 years and it's gone. Whatever we're going to get um, moving forward. I mean, I hope that somehow Americans have enough rebelliousness in them to be able to push back. But we'll see. I, I haven't seen it so far, but um, I've had some conversations with some people that said they're just waiting until absolutely, absolutely all avenues of um, of writing this wrong um, are completely destroyed. But I, the way I see it is I think all avenues have been completely destroyed now because the the puppet masters and those that support them control um, they control most all of our media with the exception of you know some of these little blogs and things like that yeah. um they control uh they control the congress they control the government they control the alphabet agencies they control the schools they control all of our media and they control the judiciary and they control the borders or not as the case may be because we don't have borders anymore what's terrifying to me is that the just going back to the knowledge parks it ties into this whole this whole thing of going to different countries like you were saying is that when you ask gen z okay name three countries outside north america let's say they can't name one now okay maybe they don't need to now but if they need to flee well, they'll the country, say something well, they'll say something like africa <laughs> like no yeah. that's a continent <laughs> yeah yeah but if they need to flee the country because it goes in a tyrannical way good luck Good luck. That, that's why, you know, I think it is so crucial to look at all these different countries. Look at the residencies, look at the citizenship. How much does the citizenship cost? I, I certainly can't afford it right now, but I'm looking into it. Very fortunate that both of us already have two passports, right? It, it provides yeah. us that extra. Yeah, benefit. at least you have some some options. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But when people are just like, no, it, it will get better. I don't want to take that chance. No. I don't no. want to take that chance. I mean, ever. I would, I would love. Look, I, I, I don't, I don't want people to think that I'm just going to up and run, you know, every time. No. But if there's no, um, if there's no chance of us um, gaining back our culture and civilization, then, you know, if there's no chance, then why wouldn't I run? You know, I just want to go okay. somewhere where I'm not going to be. Um, attacked <laughs> yeah. for having for, for way not having group think yep not having group think views yeah absolutely yeah and it, it's it's so unfortunate because there's all these warnings in mainstream in in mainstream media which a lot of people on the oppositional side say okay it's controlled which i'm sure it is i'm not denying that at all but there's warnings there there's warnings in place you look at media products like most of kubrick's films as you referenced or even if you look at other films like um like i don't know there's there's a film with gregory peck called the boys of brazil oh yeah i don't know if you yeah, yeah i don't know if you've seen it to yeah. me that's a warning this film is banned in the uk i don't think it is in the us it's called the devils it's a british film with um oliver reed i don't know if you're familiar with it but i'm not but i'll look it up yeah well it's a it's a it's a genuinely horrific film 
but it's a warning. It's a true story about a breakaway state called Loudon, which is now in France. And basically, what it is about is the cardinal, the leader, or as or as it we've often referenced, the puppet master, wants to take Loudon back. He doesn't want it to be a separatist state, but he can't just do that. The king promised that they would not go in. So what does he do? Oh, he accuses the leader of being a satanic guy or something like that and bribing people. So the guy is executed. And what happens? All the walls fall down. Isn't, isn't that strange? Isn't that strange that as soon as the, the leader of Ludon's taken away, Ludon's magically taken back into the French kingdom or whatever the country was back then. It's a warning. People don't see it. People see a clock. People watch a clockwork orange and go, no, I think I do trust the government. I do trust medicine in most cases, of course. Yeah. Or they, I, I wish, or, you know, what, I, I do wish that when um, I was filming Eyes Wide Shut that I yeah. could have some great, co I, I think now, what I know now, what I believe now, I think I would have some amazing conversations or I'd like to hope I could have with Stanley because I think that we yeah. would see eye to eye on a number of things. Um, I've discovered a lot of things about Stanley's um, stances and beliefs since then that makes me think that we're, you know, kindred spirits. Um, but anyway, yeah, bless him. Anyway. <laughs> but Eyes Wide Shut, it's such a, to me, that, to me, that is one of my favorite films. I remember I, with me, Eyes Wide Shut was always the thing was, I wonder why no one's ever made a film like this before. Then I found it. I watched it and I thought, <laughs> okay, they made it. Good. Right? Good. Yeah. So I always have these things of, oh, the music, why don't they put this music in and it'll be so good, blah, blah. With Eyes Wide Shut, that again, just like The Devils, just like Cobble Coins, just like all these films, is a warning. And people still go, I don't think secret societies exist. Okay. But fiction has to come from somewhere, my friend. Fiction yeah. has to come from somewhere. But there's pictures online of these weird parties in places no one knows where it is. I mean, it's in like France and these types of places, but places no one knows the address of. The pictures are disturbing. If you look up the names, you can find out what it what it is that's what's going on. And people still go, nah, nah, it can't happen. It can't no. happen because they said it doesn't. It does yeah. happen. Correct. It exists. Yeah, yeah. absolutely exists. I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm sure in Hollywood, with all the stuff that's been coming out over the past six years in Hollywood since 2017, since it's hit the mainstream, what, what I should say, because some people people have known about it for years, as I'm sure yeah. you'd agree. Yeah. People have known about the degeneracy going down in Hollywood and the yeah. in these types of modeling industries yeah. for for a millennia, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. People. I mean, why what, what I'd love to ask you, Julianne, is why are people Ignoring the fear of their career, why do people comply with the degeneracy? Well, you just answered it. Fear of their career. Their career is more important yeah. to them. Their career and yeah. the possibility of fame, money, power, you know, more important to them. So they're, they just turn a blind eye. It's like uh, with, with um, you know, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. What, you think they didn't go? No, it was going on? I mean, I knew he was a cad um, back in um, 2000, I knew, yeah. you know. But nobody says anything because you think, oh, well, you know. I, I, I describe dealing with Hollywood and, you know, big producers and whatever, directors, as kind of like you're in this sea, and you're swimming yeah. around and you're just trying to avoid the sharks as much as you can. And you're still yeah. trying to get on the path that you need to go, but you just kind of try to avoid all the bad, all the bad sharks. Um, and sometimes you find yourself in a position where you're surrounded by sharks and you think, oh crap, how am I gonna get out of this? You know, what am I gonna say? How am I gonna do this? How am I gonna politely, you know, kind of like, <laughs> back step and say, you know, thanks, but no thanks, uh, you know? And um, so, yeah, that's that's how it is. And, and for some people, the idea of fame 
um, and money and all the things that go with it is just so attractive to them. It's everything to them. So they're willing to do whatever um, they need to do in order to achieve that. And I guess the, the bottom line is that I wasn't willing to do that. Yeah. I still wanted to look myself in the face in the mirror and say, okay, you know, I'm not perfect, but I didn't go there. And I didn't. Yeah. So, you know. And then I came out as conservative and I sealed the deal. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's fine. I mean, I did I did another film a couple of years ago called Fear of Frequency, which, you know, you should watch if you get the chance. Okay. Um, I will do. I'll and it's probably going to be, uh, it's probably, possibly or probably going to be the last thing I do. Um, unless something changes. But, you know, I everything is up in the air right now. I mean, our whole civilization is up in the air right now. So I don't know if I'll do anything else. But I got a couple of Best Actress awards for it. And, um, you know, we got like Best Film, Best Thriller. Um, and so I'm happy about that. That's enough. I'm, I'm good. You know, I don't, I don't feel like I, at my age now, I don't feel like I have anything to prove to people. So people can take it or leave it. It was nice that my peers gave me those awards through the festivals, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's good. That's, that's enough. That's enough for me. I don't, I don't need to do more, you know, but that's me at my age. I mean, you're young, you've got your whole life ahead of you. Um, but I mean, for everybody young, I just think, well, you know, think long and hard about what you want to do and find ways to make your life count in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, that's what I would say, make your life stuff. count with, with the yeah. things that you do, make your life count. If it's, if it's having children, which I support, completely you know i mean the west is not having babies we need to have more babies um then definitely that um and then for others out there you know career choices think long and hard about what direction you want to go and what what could really add to our society our civilization our culture yeah but that's the sad thing people don't anymore they're too busy worrying about the the drama of people they don't know. So I think it's a lot easier for people to go, oh, did you see what Kardashian one said yeah. to Kardashian two? Instead oh, of thinking, it's so dumb. Okay. It's just, yeah. oh, you know, God, shoot me now. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's just so, it's just so utterly vacuous. Uh, and the people that are controlling, like I have this little app on my phone called Newsbreak. And yep. most of the news that comes out on it is basically just gossip. It's just, it's just crap celebrity gossip. It's just, it's disgusting. I'm just, I'm so done with it. Oh, just <laughs> so done. You know, cause this is the thing. I, I do think that we are on our way down. I think we are gonna go down. I think Western civilization is gonna go down. I, I hate to say this. I mean, I, I don't wanna say it, but that's, that's what I think. However, however, I think that there are um, lots of people out there like you and like me that will continue things, maybe on a smaller scale. Um, I don't know where we will kind of conjugate together. Um, I don't know what countries or country that will be. I don't know. But, um, but I do think that there's something in us that, um, that we will survive. We will survive and we will prevail. Um, and as I say, maybe not in this current situation of the countries are the way they are right now, but, um, but I do think that there are enough people that we will, we will survive and we will um, rise again and, and have a, a healthier culture again and a healthier civilization once again. That's what, that's what I believe and that's what I hope and that's what I pray for to God. Well, that's beautiful. And I certainly do hope that it will become a reality. I'm sure that with the people around the world who are maybe uh, the the silent ones for now, maybe they'll rise up eventually. Yeah, that's my Julianne, hope. Thank you so much. It's been absolutely great. I've had an absolute blast doing this uh, podcast interview. Me I'd too. love to have you back on the show whenever you're available, if you're ever in the UK or if I'm ever in the US. Yeah, somehow. fantastic. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been awesome. fantastic. It's been really wonderful talking to you.